love to praise his name. Uh, it sounds like it, it started off pretty rough this morning, uh, Brother Proctor. If uh, you, you'd ask that question about the East Side Church of Christ, whether they love to praise the Lord and how they praise the Lord. When we started off this morning, I probably would have said, well, I don't know. Uh, but I got to say that we ended up Amen. in praising the Lord and knowing that I love to praise the Lord, knowing that you love to praise the Lord. We all love to praise the Lord. And how do you praise the Lord? You lift up your voice to him for what reasons? For what he's done for you. Yeah, do you realize a lot of folks didn't make it here this morning? There was a lot of folks that didn't even rise up out of their beds this morning. There are a lot of folks that are not on this time side of life this morning. So you better believe I love to praise his holy name. Amen. 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 Say it again. I love to praise his name. It's good to see those who are out this morning uh, to uh, just being uh, utilizing obedient faith and just doing what God has required and has commanded them to do, which is to come out and worship and praise his mighty name. He's done a mighty thing for us all last week, and he brought us to this point, and we ought to be grateful for what he has done. Uh, I know that there's someone here uh, that probably is not 100%. Uh, somebody here probably not feeling uh, good this morning. Somebody here probably has an ache in their body or uh, uh, something that's going wrong. They had to limp here. They, uh, Proctor, somebody had to drag one leg here uh, with them today. Uh, somebody's got a shoulder issue. Somebody's got uh, something going on with their heart. And somebody's got something uh, going on with their lungs. And uh, they got a reason not to praise him. But I got to believe that the reason why you're here is because you saw the fact that God has woke you up this morning on this day and you ought to be able to say I love to praise his holy name in the sanctuary isn't that all right this morning God has been truly good to us all I want you to continue to pray for those who are absent because uh, of physical illness brother uh, David uh, Rolf called me early this morning he is in the hospital he's at St. Joseph Hospital there uh, doing some tests as you know uh, David has had this battle with cancer and uh, God has brought him uh, a mighty long way but he made it a point to call me this morning and say that he's still in the hospital and he wants the church to pray uh, for him that he uh, will be able to come out on this uh, on, on the positive side of what is going on with his physical health uh, please do pray for my wife uh, she is still at home uh, limping around uh, she's getting better but please do continue uh, to pray for her uh, speedy recovery. Uh, to our visitors, we're glad that you are present on this Sunday morning. We hope, trust, and pray uh, that you will receive some type of blessings uh, from our uh, lesson this morning. We are glad that you have considered uh, the East Side Church of Christ right here in Lee Summit, Missouri as the place uh, that you would worship on uh, this day. If there are questions that you have about our services, any of the brethren, any of the sisters, uh, or myself will be able to answer any questions that you have. If you have a Bible a question, we are ready to give you uh, a Bible answer. Please turn your Bibles to Amos, uh, the seventh chapter, verse number seven and eight. The seventh chapter of Amos, verse number seven and and eight. It is in the Old Testament. And the Bible has recorded in Romans the 15th chapter verse number four. Uh, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures uh, might have hope. Uh, so we go back to the Old Testament to learn uh, what things happened or transpired during uh, that time to help us on our journey uh, from earth uh, to heaven. Might I add a very difficult journey Amen. from earth to heaven. The Bible reads in Amos the seventh chapter, verse number seven and eight. Thus he showed me, and behold the Lord stood upon a wall made by a plumb line with a plumb line in his hand. 
And the Lord said unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel, and I will not pass by them anymore. Amen. Church, the tag for this morning's lesson is, Are you plumb to God's word? Are you plumb to God's word? Many of your versions of the Bible, if you are familiar with the King James version of the Bible, in verse number 8 of Amos, the 7th chapter, uh, the very end of that verse, it says, I will pass not again by them. Amen. Many other versions of the Bible, the New Living Translation reads verse number 8 as this. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I answered, a plumb line. And the Lord replied, I will test my people with this plumb line. I will no longer ignore their sins. The New American Standard Version says, The Lord said to me, What do you see, Amos? And I said, A plumb line. Then the Lord said, Behold, I am about to put a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel, and I will spare them no longer. Church, I want you to know that God is going to set a plumb line amongst all of his people. But this morning, many of you are probably wondering, what on earth is a plumb line? If you don't know what a plumb line is, this message is not going to make very much sense to you. A plumb line is a string with a weight, a cylinder type weight, or what is called a plumb that is tied to the end of it. And it, it works because it works with the earth's gravity. I remember at a very young age, I found a plumb line in the neighborhood and not sure what it was, I took it and I would swing it around and around and around and my friends would run and I would throw it at them. Fortunately, Brother Jackson, I was not a very good shot. Uh, therefore, I did not make contact with the head of any of my friends causing uh, brain damage or killing them. But a plumb line is used in carpentry to ensure that something is straight. Church, I got to believe that when they prepared this building in 1867, uh, that a plumb line was used. I, I got to believe that when they erected these walls, they wanted to ensure that the walls were straight up and down. Uh -huh. So they would take this plumb line and they would hang it by the string. And regardless of where you are at in this earth, if you are on the side of a mountain and you hung this plumb line up, it is straight up and down. God used this plumb line uh, when he built uh, the city of Israel, uh, when he brought the children of Israel out of Egyptian bondage. He used uh, this plumb line uh, to build uh, this wall. Uh, Brother Smith, and when God built the wall, he used the plumb line to ensure that it was straight up and down. Uh, this wall had no flaws in it. Uh, this wall was not defective at all. Uh, this wall uh, did not have any bulges in it, Brother Hunt. Uh, this wall was a perfect wall. It was straight up 
and down. And the plumb line was used uh, to ensure uh, that the wall was straight up and down. Church, I want you to understand this. Uh, they are what is called field engineers. And what field engineers do, they are a part of the architectural process in the erecting and the constructing the building. Uh, what these field engineers will do, uh, they will go out on a site that is being built. They'll take the blueprints and they'll look at the blueprints. They'll adjust anything that needs to be adjusted. They make notes of what is on the blueprint. They look at the measurements and then they carry with them on their utility belt a very needed a tool called of the plumb line. A part of their job, Brother Crutchfield, is to ensure that the walls that are being erected are straight up and down. Because if they are not, Brother Boone, what would happen is these walls will begin to lean to the left or it will begin to lean to the right and therefore the walls will begin to collapse. So God has told Amos that he is going to set a plumb line against his people. I want you to know that this plumb line is always going to point straight up and down. It's useful when someone is building something and God built a wall and this wall was there for the children of Israel. Isn't that all right, church? In the visions of Amos, he sees the Lord standing on a wall that was built with a plumb line. It was built straight. It was built firm. It was built as a strong wall. However, he had a plumb line in his hand and he is measuring this wall up against the measurements again and he revealed to him that something had happened to the wall. Something is wrong with the wall. It has become flawed. This wall is now defected. It has begun to lean to the right. It's leaning to the left. It no longer stands straight up and down. It has become defective. Church, the wall represented Israel. He said, behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. It was a wall that God himself had built. It was made by a plumb line. Therefore, it was exactly a vertical. It was straight up and down. It was strong and it was firm. God now stands upon this wall, not to hold it up, but to tear it down. He stands upon it with a plumb line in his hand to measure it, to appear to be bones in the wall. There appears to be bulges in this wall. Uh, this wall appears to be weak and could fall at any minute. God would bring the people of Israel to the trial. He would discover they were wicked. He discovered of their wickedness and showed wherein they erred and to mark how far their wall must be pulled down. Church, when a wall becomes crooked, too defective, there's not much left that you can do but to pull it down. Israel had gotten so far away from the law. They had gotten so far away from the truth that he had given them, that he had taken them through uh, when uh, 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 they brought them through uh, the Egyptian abundant that there was little else to do with them but to destroy them to tear them down he said in Amos the 7th chapter verse number 8 I will not pass by them anymore I will not ignore their sins anymore. Time has come. In Amos the seventh chapter, verse number nine, the Lord said, the high places of Isaac shall be desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. 
I will rest with the sword against the house of Jeroboam. God has given us his standards in the Bible. He has told us what is true. Before Jesus Christ, he ever went to the cross. He knew, listen to this church. He knew that not everyone would walk by the plumb way or by the straight and the narrow way. In fact, he said the majority will go in the other direction. Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse number 13 and 14, he says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the way that leadeth to destruction. And there are many who will go by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leadeth to life, and there are few that be found it. Church, friends, family and everything that you and I do it's so important that we continuously look for God's plumb line because if we are made straight we will be judged by God's plumb line one of these days the proctor, one of these days God will put his plumb line against each and every one of us and it will either expose our shortcomings or it will reveal our faithfulness to him. Church, I want you to understand that God is going to set a plumb line against all of us by the things that we have done on this time side of life. Church, I want to give you a little bit of history of our text. If you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Uh, we were in uh, the book of Kings, 1 Kings, a uh, matter of fact, the 12th chapter, and we dealt with the mind.